the lingering spirit of Elijah Lovejoy. I don't believe there is any other Illinois town along the Mississippi River is, that is as haunted as Alton. Mark Twain once called the place a dismal, a dismal little liver town, but since it has earned a more distinguished reputation as one of the most haunted small towns in America. The history of the place is filled with all the markings of ghost stories, death, murder, disease, tragedy, the Civil War, the Underground Railroad, and much more. One of the most tragic events in the history of Alton occurred on November 7, 1837, when the brutal murder of abolitionist and newspaper publisher Elijah P. Lovejoy, although largely forgotten today. Although largely forgotten today, the events surrounding his death galvanized the abo- galvanized the abo- the abolitionist cause and helped start American America on its path toward the Civil War. They also created a ghost story a ghost story that haunted Alton for generations. Elijah Lovejoy, the man who came to be known as the first martyr to freedom, came to the west from Maine and settled with his family in St. Louis. When he arrived in 1827 to teach school, he was warmly received by the citizens, but his view about the abolitionist movement in America would soon wear out his welcome in the pro-slavery state of Missouri. For a short time, he taught school and began to make a name for himself as a writer. He eventually gave up his teaching career, however, to become a Presbyterian minister. After completing his studies at the seminary, he returned to St. Louis and started started a religious newspaper called the St. Louis Observer. Articles with an anti-slavery with an anti-slavery bent began appearing in the newspaper in 1834, and despite warmi- warnings from a number of prominent citizens, continued to appear in 1835. Threats began to come from angry slave owners who feared that a slave rebellion could start in the city. In 1836, vandals broke into the offices of the newspaper several times and severely damaged his printing press. Lovejoy realized he, he was finished in St. Louis. The city would no longer tolerate him and he, feel, and he feared for his family's safety. He sent his wife and son to her mother's home in St. Charles and made plans to move his newspaper to Alton, Illinois. He arrived in Alton in late July, 1836. He sent for his family with the hopes that the free city of Illinois would provide a better environment for his abolitionist work. But that was not to be. On July 23rd, a steamboat delivered Lovejoy's new printing press to the Alton Dogs, and and shortly before dawn, a group of vandals wrecked the press and dumped it into the river. A short time later, another press was also destroyed, but it is the story surrounding the arrival of the fourth printing press that inspired the ghostly legend of Elijah Lovejoy. On November 7, 1837, Lovejoy's final printing press was delivered to the Alton docks and was taken to a warehouse along the river that belonged to Godfrey Gilman and Company. Lovejoy and a number of his friends gathered at the warehouse with guns to defend their press. But the day passed without incident. Later that night, however, a mob gathered outside the warehouse. Most of them were intoxicated, and they called loudly for the press to be surrendered to them. Once that demand was refused, they tried a different approach and used several rocks to shatter the windows of the warehouse. Several members of the mob waved guns, and Lovejoy, or someone else inside the building, fired a shot through the broken window. One of the men outside crumbled to the ground and the mob was enraged. They stormed the warehouse intent on revenge. Someone placed a ladder against the building and climbed to the roof, a burning torch in his hand. Lovejoy ran outside with a pistol and ordered the man man to come down before he could fire his own weapon. Several men in the crowd fired on the editor and he was hit five times. After he fell to the ground and died, the wear inside the mob after he fell to the ground and died, the, the defenders inside the warehouse surrendered. The mob pushed its way inside and broke the press, printing press into pieces and then flung the remnants into the Mississippi River. Lovejoy's body was left in the warehouse overnight. Um, the next day, a grave was hastily dug in a local cemetery, and the body, without a proper ceremony, was thrown in haphazardly. Was thrown in a haphazard, 
was thrown in and haphazardly covered up. Some years later, Lovejoy's body was exhumed and moved to another location. Today, a fine monument stands in, in tribute to the fallen abolitionist. And while he is highly regarded in these less traveled times, his death was never avenged. The tragedy of the Lovejoy murder spun what seemed to be like a curse to many of Alton's citizens. Property values in the, city, in the city shrank, and when tales of the rights spread across America, the press attacked from all directions. The abolitionist newspapers wildly condemned the city, as did the free press, which feared the rights of the First Amendment were in jeopardy. The court proceedings surrender. The court proceedings surrounding this, the affair made the city look even more corrupt. At a January 1838 session of the Alton Munis Municipal Court, the grand jury brought indictment indictments against both Lovejoy's defenders and some of the rioters. The case the the cases later came to trial, and Lovejoy's friends were acquitted of all charges. But so were the members of the mob. Alton was branded a lawless place, and thanks to this, new settlers avoided the area, and many current residents packed and moved, packed up and moved out, leaving that Owen had a little future. It'd be years before the city struggled back to life. Legends that Godfrey Gilman and Company warehouses never used again after the terrible events of 1837. The place was avoided for that simple reason, that it was believed to be haunted. Local dock workers and freight wagon drivers who had on occasion passed by the place at night spread tales of mysterious lights that were seen shining in the windows and of loud cries and gunshots that would echo in the darkness. Others claimed that the terror experience there left an impression on the area that reverberated for many years. Many who visited the location claimed to feel the madness of the crowd, the desperation of Lovejoy and his friends, and the energy pushing, pulsing throughout the, through the whole incident. Most eerie were the hills of a f spectral figure that would exit the, si the side door of the building and begin to run along the street. The figure would then stumble, clutch his hands to his chest, and fall to the ground. It is believed that this figure was the ghost of Elijah Lovejoy, reliving his final moments over and over again. The spirit is said to have roamed the riverfront in despair for many years, but the ghostly tale came to an end with the destruction of the warehouse and with the property burial of Lovejoy's missing body. Fearing reprisal and desecration of his corpse, Lovejoy's friends had secretly buried his body in what, had, in what was then a small cemetery in town. A wooden marker with Lovejoy's initials on it was then used to mark the grave was first used to mark the grave, but then it was quickly removed. After this was after that the only two distinct only two distinctive trees remained as a rough guide to the grave's location. After the cemetery came into general use the trees were cut down, and the grave would have been lost if not for the superintendent, William Burden. He marked the site with two pieces of limestone and told no one what they were for, or even or even that anyone was buried at the site. And then he died, leaving no clues to, as to Lovejoy's whereabouts. In 1865, Thomas Dimmick, a former resident of Alton, decided to try and track down the abolitionist remains. He sought out the last survivor of those who buried Lovejoy William Scotch Johnson and of <clears throat> the last survivor of those who buried Lovejoy, William, Scotch, Johnson, and learned the location of the remains. Lovejoy's grave is pr properly recognized at last, and his restless ghost is finally ra laid to rest. <laughs>